Mr Deputy Speaker, the Secretary of State talks about the importance of having insurance policies, and if you're managing risk as he is, of course that is the proper thing to do. However, on Friday, the Secretary of State issued a ministerial direction uh, to the NHS like England Chief Executive Amanda Pritchard to authorise the use, as he's touched on in his statement, of private sector providers. This is at a very high cost. It requires a minimum income guarantee for those private hospitals of between 75 million and 90 million a month. And if the surge requirement is used, that could rise to 175 million pound a month, as the chief executive sets out in her letter requesting the direction. Could the Secretary of State explain where that money is going to come from and why, at this stage of the pandemic, we're still being held over a barrel uh, as the taxpayer? by the private sector, couldn't he not have negotiated at least a better deal? Well, um, Mr Deputy Speaker, I mean, first of all, the, the deal the Right Honourable the Honourable Lady refers to that was uh, negotiated by the NHS, and I think they've done an excellent job in, in, in their negotiations. It's also absolutely right for the Chief Executive for the NHS to write to the Government, to write to me, and to request such a direction, because the NHS's job is obviously running the NHS, but the Government's job is also to think beyond uh, the NHS and the impact of COVID beyond uh, just health. And the Honourable Lady should know by now that the more capacity that we've got in the NHS, the less the need there is for restrictions. And what I can tell you for sure, uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, had we not taken out this insurance policy with the, with the, uh, uh, the, the independent sector and, and got this extra capacity, that she would be one of the first standing up here in this House asking us why we didn't work with the independent sector. 